Welcome to Module 12 in the series of modules on the fundamentals of telecommunications. In this module, you will be learning about the Internet standards and services. Once again, I'm Ted Chandler, your online CIS instructor. After finishing this module, you will be able to first summarize the history of today's Internet. Then you will be able to identify the organizations that cooperate to set Internet standards. You'll also be able to explain conventions for Internet domain and host naming. You'll be able to describe several popular Internet-based services and identify the protocols on which they rely. And finally, you'll be able to run and interpret the output of simple TCPIP-based utilities. In 1969, the wide area network that would later become part of the Internet was known as ARPANET. It was funded by the U.S. government and used for communications between scientists and researchers across the nation who were collaborating on defense research projects. TCP IP became the protocol for the Internet after it was codified in 1972. TCP IP was designed to facilitate open communications between all computers and servers. It remains the basis for Internet data exchange. In 1991, the World Wide Web, a collection of many Internet servers and a method for organizing and formatting data scattered over these services was introduced. To navigate the web, a user requires a browser, which is a program capable of interpreting web formatting codes. Technical standards for today's Internet are established through a comprehensive application and review process overseen by the IETF, or Inter Internet Engineering Task Force. Internet standards are documented in requests for comments called RFCs. Some other Internet-related technical standards are established by government-sponsored organizations such as the ITU. IP address and domain name management is currently overseen by ICANN, the Inter Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. ICANN is a private corporation contracted by the U.S. Department of Commerce. It assumes financial and administrative control of functions previously performed by IANA, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, which is based at the University of Southern California and still performs much of the Internet's top-level system administration. Every host on the Internet needs a way to associate host names with IP addresses across the Internet. This association must be accomplished via a host file, a text file containing a table that associates in internal host names with their IP addresses, or more often by using the domain name system, or DNS. DNS is a hierarchical way of identifying domain names and their addresses. It relies on a database which is distributed over 13 root servers across the Internet. Because it is distributed, DNS will not fail catastrophically if one of a few computers go down. Domain names reflect the hierarchical nature of DNS. In this scheme, each domain name contains a series of labels separated by periods. The last label in a domain name represents a top-level domain or the highest level in the DNS hierarchy. Many name servers across the globe cooperate to keep track of IP addresses and their associated domain names. Namespace refers to the database of Internet IP addresses and their associated names. Every name server holds a piece of the DNS namespace. At the highest level in the hierarchy sit the root servers.
Every TCP IP service is associated with a port through which the client and server exchange data. Ports are numbers from 0 to 65,536, and numbers from, for the most common TCP IP services are set by defaults. The transport layer protocol on which a service relies is a matter of convention depending on whether the server the service requires reliable data delivery. On the client side, access to the web requires TCP IP, a unique IP address, a connection to the internet, and a browser. On the server side, a website requires TCP IP, a connection to DNS servers, routers, web uh, service software and a connection to the Internet. To interpret data, the web relies on Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP. When you type the address of a web page in your web browser's address field, HTTP transports the information about your request to the web server on the server's port 80 via TCP IP protocol. HTTP interprets web requests and re returns information to the client in hypertext markup language, HTML, the web document formatting language. The latest version of HTML is XHTML or HTML 4.0, which combines the flexibility of WML with the simplicity of HTML. Every web page is identified by a uniform resource locator or URL that specifies the services it uses, its services fully qualified host name and is HTML or XHTML page or script name. Note all URLs specify the HTTP protocol. They may also specify Telnet or FTP, for example. Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, or SMTP, is responsible for moving messages from one email server to another over TCP IP based networks. It operates in the application layer of the TCP IP model and relies on TCP as a transport layer. It operates from the TCP I port 25. SMTP is a simple subprotocol incapable of doing anything more than transporting mail or holding it in a queue. The post office protocol, or POP, runs on top of SMTP and provides centralized storage for email messages. It provides centralized storage for email messages. Users need an STML compliant mail program to connect to their POP servers and download mail from, from storage. POP does not allow users to store mail on the server after they download it. The Internet Mail Access Protocol, or IMAP, is a more sophisticated alternative to POP. The single biggest advantage of IMAP4 relative to POP is that it allows users to store messages on the mail server rather than always having to download them from the local machine. The file transfer protocol, FTP, is an application layer protocol that manages file transfers between TCP IP hosts. The FTP service depends on an FTP server that is always waiting for requests. After a client connects to the FTP server, FTP data is exchanged via TCP IP using port 20. FTP commands are sent and received through TCP IP port 21. Several utilities come with the TCP IP suite to help users and network administrators manage and access TCP IP connections. 
On Windows, is the utility that, when run from the command prompt, can verify that a computer's TCP IP software is installed, bound to the NIC, configured correctly, and communicates with the network. It is often employed to determine whether a host is responding and whether it can reach hosts outside its own network. Traceroute or Tracert on Windows systems is a utility that traces the path from one host to another, identifying all intermediate hops between the two nodes. This utility is useful for determining router or network conductivity problems. The NetStat utility displays TCP IP statistics and details about TCP IP components and connections on a host. It is helpful to determine what services are running and what connections are active. In summary, we have learned that in 1969, the wide area network that would later become part of the Internet was known as ARPANET. TCP IP became the protocol for the Internet after it was codified in 1972. It was designed to facilitate open communications between all computers. DNS is a hierarchical way of identifying domain names and their addresses. It relies on a database that is distributed over 13 root servers across the Internet. And finally, we learn that several utilities come with TCP IP suites to help users and network administrators manage and access TCP IP connections. These include IP config, ping, traceroute, and netstats. This, complete mo this completes Module 12 uh, of the series, and please take Quiz 12, and I'll see you in Module 13.